Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day, a good way to support the channel is by leaving a like, by leaving comment or comments, or by subscribing if you have not already done so, there is a big NFT drop happening today, as every Friday, and if you are interested, the link is in the description below, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. The prices within the cryptocurrency space at the moment, as we have been discussing for the last four or five or six or seven days, are quite weird. However, a large portion of the news is actually quite optimistic as to where our cryptocurrency prices are going to be going. At the time of me making this video, I believe Bitcoin is down by around 2%, give or take. Nothing too dramatic. For those of you not looking at the screen... It says Bitcoin new bullish setup is targeting $36,000. Here are the levels to watch. As far as I can tell, after having absorbed nearly all the price news, uh, if we break below $29,000, $28,000, this could spell bearish sentiment news, woe is us kind of thing. However, if we maintain the current course, even if we continue dipping down, but do not break below the $30,000 level. Therefore, we have a very good chance of moving back up. The entire idea being if we can use, continuously use, $30,000, $31,000, $32,000 dollars as levels of support. Apparently, all the analysts think that we are going to hold. And therefore, we've also had news like this like about two days ago as well, as far as like where Bitcoin should be going within the next couple of days. This one says Ethereum consolidates what could trigger strong recovery in Ether uh, if Bitcoin goes up. If Bitcoin goes up, Ethereum goes up. If we fast forward in time and have a time machine and get to Ethereum's upgrade, that could also raise Ethereum's price. So there's a lot of different factors as to how this could happen. However, um, I'll tell you this much after, I mean, I only have two tabs up here because it's, you know, once again, redundancy, um, but it feels as if uh, the analysts are at least hyper optimistic as to where prices are going to go. We've had news for the last two months that we are in maybe at the end of the reaccumulation period where basically rich people shook the tree, as many weak apples as could possibly fall out of the market fell, they picked up all the apples and now they're making apple juice. So anyway... That's the price news. Nothing too crazy. There was no, like, this altcoin did this. Like, we aren't dramatically here, and we aren't dramatically there. There's no up by 20%. There's no down by 20%. Everything is, like, sideways down. You should understand that at this point, it's, like, around, you know, 2 3% down, but nothing too extremely crazy. So, we'll see what the weekend brings us. And without further ado, let's moving on. In the most popular news story probably of the decade, and I cannot tell you how frequently I saw this this morning, Square CEO Jack Dorsey has revealed that the firm is building a new division that will focus on building decentralized finance services that utilize Bitcoin. Jack Dorsey made the announcement via Twitter earlier today and revealed that Square's new division will be building an open developer platform with the sole goal of making it easy to create non-custodial, permissionless, and decentralized financial services. Our primary focus is Bitcoin. Once again, Jack Dorsey loves Bitcoin. Jack Dorsey believes that within the next 10 years, everything in some sort of way will actually be integrated with Bitcoin. That Bitcoin will eventually be the currency of the internet and everyone will be using it in some sort of way. Uh, this doesn't mean that Bitcoin will be the only currency, but it means that things will be kind of finalized and or utilized in some sort of way with Bitcoin. The news that Bitcoin is at some point going to have decentralized financial services on its back is of course incredible news. It's just a matter of it actually happening. We had news like this a couple of years ago. I say about a good year and a half, two years ago of other people trying to implement something like this. This of course got fanfare. However, Jack Dorsey is far more popular and far richer than the other people. So therefore his uh, proposal for Bitcoin DeFi is going to be pushed forth a lot quicker and with more vigor if you can kind of um, say that. So uh, what's probably going to happen is more than likely it's either going to be another layer around Bitcoin and or sidechain, something similar to the Lightning Network. The idea is 
as Bitcoin can only do three to five transactions per second on the core, that is not going to change any time in the next 10 years, as far as I can tell. So you make another chain, another layer that is basically attached or tethered to Bitcoin. The other chain that they're creating, you know, sky's the limit. It can do 10,000, 15,000, 35,000 transactions per second. And all that has to happen every hour, every day is basically the networks have to, in, in the simplest form, is touch to record the transactions from the, the quick chain onto Bitcoin. These are then recorded onto Bitcoin, and therefore the finalization of the transactions happen on Bitcoin's layer. Bitcoin only has to transact one transaction, as it can only do three to five transactions per second, while the other chain has done a massive amount of transactions at that, at that time. So we will eventually have these a lot of people tend to forget that these are computers and they do have upgrades and they can have other things on top of them, et cetera, et cetera. Don't forget, like, you know, remember years ago, these, these super slow internet people also believed for some reason that the internet couldn't be scaled. And now those people are nowhere to be found because they're also using the internet on their phone. So this is very popular news. Uh, Square targets Bitcoin DeFi business. It's, it's absolutely major. The idea of, of DeFi in general is probably... I think the the earlier moments of me hearing about DeFi, especially with an associated listen, when someone creates something called decentralized finance and all we have are sushi and pancake and unicorn, I sat there and I was like, this sounds absolutely dumb. But the idea of a ledger recorded automated uh, financial system that doesn't have to have any uh, regulators because it's governed by the algorithm and therefore it's nearly impossible to have bad actors this is going to take off it's just the names once again sushi i i'm not going to be like yeah are you guys using sushi i'm i i, I cannot work with you you know where are the buns anyway so that's the um jack dorsey news very popular all over the place uh only ha- it was like five tabs up here <laughs> so cool amazing Fantastic. It's going to happen at some point. All this stuff is going to be built on top of Bitcoin and people are going to be like, but I thought Bitcoin was slow. Like I'm seeing a lot of people also discussing the fact that once again, the thing happening in El Salvador and there's also some other country who's also utilizing it as well with the Lightning Network. And everyone's like, well, it's going to be a pain to actually pay for things in Bitcoin. No, dude, like and I I mean, like, like a fraction of research, like take a good 15 minutes out of your day and find this news because there uh, people around the world are using lightning now like the transaction fees are like one one thousandth of one cent it's instantaneous and the 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 settlement layer once again they at some point touch and lightning records onto bitcoin so we know that those transactions have happened and they're they're on the core so the technology is there but i think a lot of people are still living in 2015 with the stuff that they say so cool Good job. We will have DeFi on Bitcoin. I gave it like a good year. Jack Dorsey tends to say stuff, and I think he's already, he already has it planned in the background. Anyway, that's the Bitcoin DeFi news, and let's move on. Next up, in something that I'm actually quite excited for, and I know other people really won't be, digital asset-focused Swiss bank Signum has teamed up with art investment firm Artemundi to offer fractionalized ownership shares in a Picasso for $6,000 each. Shares representing ownership over a $3.68 million Picasso painting, Filet au Béret, will be tar- targeted, will be tokenized and issued via blockchain technology, allowing a wide variety of investors to gain exposure to the artwork. The non-fungible tokens can be exclusively purchased by sophisticated and institutional investors through Signa Bank, with secondary trade set to take place on SigX, the bank's digital asset trading platform. If you weren't here a couple of years ago, this was a major thing. And back then, we weren't calling them NFTs. I forgot exactly. It was just like tokenized fractional ownership in some sort of way. It was the idea that you could buy something digital, you could fractionalize it, and therefore you could kind of sell it to other people. And this can, you know, it, the the chain can continue for as long as you kind of want. I, I get excited by things like this because it opens up heavily previously unacquirable assets for a large number of people. We spoke about this before. So the idea that if you have a, let's say you have a flat, and the flat is absolutely gigantic and it costs a, a, a cool million dollars. You don't have a million dollars, but you and 100 other people each have $10,000. 
this luxury property that you would have normally not been able to acquire, you'll actually have the NFT rights to a fraction of that property. And as that flat gets rented out every single month, and of course, they're going to be paying digitally, you'll get that payment to your actual bank account. So it, it opens up the doors to so many different ways of people being able to invest in these other products. Not exclusively, you know, I understand that not everyone has $6,000 to be able to throw around to even have a fraction of a Picasso. But imagine what the future will be like for people who want to own a fraction of a Banksy. You go, I don't have, you know, a million to be able to buy into that Banksy, but I do have $3,000 that I can do that. And you own that piece of that. For those of you who don't know, in the, in the art world, typically, art tends to appreciate by roughly around 19% per year. That's usually like the normal average if you look at all the charts, 19% per year. So you're making a cool 19% per year on your money, owning a fraction of that uh, Banksy. And that's, I, 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 like, like I said, it's not for everyone, but I, I find it extremely um, cool that things like this are really taking off. Uh, I think in the next 10 years, it'll be completely mainstream to say that your NFT portfolio is actually comprised also of uh, apartments and of this and of art and of, you know, all these other kind of thing. So um, here's the actual um, news article for it right here from Reuters. It says shares in Picasso painting go up for grabs at $6,000 in blockchain sale. <sighs> yeah, I like art for those of you who don't know. I like digital art. I like all types of art. And it's just, um, yeah, this, this makes me very happy because it makes me know that in the future, um, other people who especially uh, weren't able to get into our market now because I still think we are very early adopters will be able to in the future at least buy fragments of these investments and the investments will pay dividends and therefore you kind of get the point anyway that's the Picasso news and let's move on all right now, this was also very popular, and it took me a while to really dig deep, and I, I'm showing this one first because this is after the deep dig, if you will. It says, Cardano closes in on one of its most important milestones since its inception, the implementation of the smart contract platform Plutus. Input Output Global announced via its Twitter handle that the successful rollout of the hard fork for the Alonzo testnet. This update will integrate Plutus into the mainnet. As NewsBTC reported, at the moment, Cardano's developer is testing Alonzo in color-coded phases. The first one was blue, and I believe this one was white, and I think the next one is then purple. Yesterday, on the 15th of July, around 19.44 UTC, that is 7.44 p.m., the testnet migrated to the Alonzo white node. IOG said the new network is happily making blocks already. Each phase has its own specific set of objectives and tasks to be completed with support from the staking pool operators and other partners. They said over the past week, we have spun up a new network and onboarded our new intake ready to help us move closer to smart contracts. Now the next stage of the journey begins. When I read this news the first time, every other website had, uh, they didn't mention that this was the actual test net. This one says right here, Cardano blockchain successfully upgrades to Alonzo White. This one says Cardano successfully deploys Alonzo wide, White hard fork. Uh, this one also says Cardano has completed an upgrade that will mean it can bring advanced smart contracts in DeFi to its blockchain. Every single website that I read made sure not to mention that this was happening on the testnet. That's why I showed this one to you so that you weren't confused and running around and thinking about should you be throwing more money into Cardano. Cardano will eventually have smart contracts in DeFi and NFTs and ABCs on their platform. However, this is just the test net. I was quite disappointed because I woke up this morning and I was reading through the articles and everything that I read was upgrade successful, upgrade successful, hard fork successful. And I'm like, well, this is it. This is the moment. I made sure to keep looking around and nope, we are in color coded test net phases. It was blue, white, and I think the next one it says somewhere around here is, it says it's somewhere here, is purple. And then after that one, we should have another round or go to see exactly when we're going to get the actual thing. There's still no actual, here we go, Alonzo purple. Uh, we have no actual release date for this upgrade. I wish they would kind of do it. I understand the point of the, the test nets, but come on. Let's kind of go. So the news is, um, you once again, the other websites would have you believe 
that the upgrade officially took place. Those were test nets just to make sure that you are grounded in your expectations of everything that's currently taking place. Because, you know, I was like, what is what is wrong with everyone? You know, anyway, that's the Cardano news. Uh, we're moving forward, but still quite not there. And let's move on. Also in popular news, but I only have one tab open because it's like, oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, PayPal has announced it has increased the amount of cryptocurrency U.S. customers can buy via its platform to $100,000 per week. Purchases were previously limited to $20,000 per week. It also dropped its annual limit, so I guess you can buy whatever you want all the time now. They said these changes will enable our customers to have more choice and flexibility in purchasing cryptocurrency on our platform, or you just want to make more money. U.S. customers outside of Hawaii are currently... I don't understand that. Can someone explain that to me? And I mean, not to... I'm not joking at all. Like, what is the deal with Hawaii and New York never being able to do anything? What is that? Like, it's it's officially a state. Got it. 50 stars. But why are they always knocked out of the running for everything? Or like, it always ends up making big news when New York and Hawaii are finally brought into the mix. I remember even before there was a website I was trying to buy something on. Like, like you know, like you you click on it and it says like all the countries and you have to find your country. And in one of them, it said like uh, shipping to all U.S. states except for Hawaii. And I'm like, you don't have airplanes? You don't, there, there are no boats? Like why is, if someone can explain that to me, I would, I would be appreciative. Um, U.S. customers outside of Hawaii are currently able to hold Bitcoin, Bcash, Ethereum, or Litecoin on the platform. They can also use them to pay for goods and services. Uh, so cool. They raised their limits. That's fantastic. You know, if you were hankering to throw in $400,000 a month into Bitcoin, well, buddy, here's your chance. Um, they still don't have this like crypto buying service anywhere else in the world, which I think is a little weird. Uh, it's only the U.S. It's not in Canada. It's not in Mexico. It's not anywhere in Europe. It's nowhere in Asia. So I assume that will also roll out sometime as well. But once again, if PayPal was your payment place of... I was trying to find another P. Of perspective. Nope, that doesn't make any sense. Of choice. Uh, well, there you go. 100K. I mean, type in PayPal uh, like Bitcoin. You should be able to find it like within the last 24 hours. This was everywhere. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why this news was so popular, but sh woo, yeah, PayPal, 100K a week. Can't wait to do that. All right, let's move on. Next up, Coinbase continues to add as many coins as possible because they're trying to remain popular. They've recently added Clover Finance. Mm-hmm. Clover Finance is a blockchain operating system designed to bridge assets on various blockchains, making it easier to transact. The token CLV pays for transactions and enables votes for upgrades. Wonderful. Coinbase is listing coins at a rapid pace. They recently added Mask, Rally, Barn Bridge, Live Peer, and Quant. Coinbase CEO... Uh, said earlier this month that the top U.S. exchange is working to list as many altcoins as possible. He added that his company is currently looking at more than 100 coins to add. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. So the news is, uh, this was also quite popular. Every time every time Coins does anything, if Coinbase, like, shuffles to the side, everyone's like, <gasps> Coinbase was shuffling. It's, 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 it's cool that they're adding all these coins, but I'm going to assume, assumption, that probably only like three people watching this have ever heard of Clover Finance. If you are, you, you're you, you. Um, the other point is no one really cares about these coins anymore. Like they've added all the top coins to their platform. Uh, and now, you know, adding Rally and, and Bond probably shouldn't be making headlines. But, you know, relevant and all that stuff. Anyway, that's the Coinbase news. And let's move on. And to finish things off, also in this was also super mega, mega, pop, 
popular news today. San Francisco-based fintech firm Ripple has notched up another small victory in its ongoing battle with the US SEC. US District Court Judge Sarah Netburn has denied the SEC's motion to suppress the deposition of the former director of the SEC's Division of Corporate Finance, William Hinman, in a ruling in in New York on Thursday. In 2018, Hinman said in a speech that based on his understanding of the Ethereum network and his decentralized structure, the current offers and sales of Ether are not security transactions. The deposition may add more weight to Ripple's claims. That the XRP token is not a security, and it testifies, blah, 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 blah. Ripple has argued that the SEC cannot regulate XRP as a security because it is a medium of exchange used for international and domestic transactions, With that, which at this point is actually true. There are at least 15 companies and organizations and banks around the world who are actually using XRP as a medium of exchange. I think it's between the U.S. and Mexico, Mexico and the Philippines, Philippines and somewhere else. There's that company in Dubai who's also doing it. So they're not wrong in that manner. It's just the SEC is very desperate to try and get control of as many things as humanly possible. Uh, So the news being is that every time that we get news and and this happens every single day and it's 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 a lot uh, is that Ripple keeps getting small victories in the courtroom where basically somebody from the SEC says something and the judge is like, shut your face because you're not saying what, what what's actually correct. Uh, so the theory still is, is that they're just simply going to uh, resolve this outside of court. Ripple's going to pay a fine and we can all move on from this news. Uh, for those of you who were not here in 2017 and 2018, I couldn't find it because when you type in these keywords, it's difficult to find anything that isn't from this year or the year before the, the, or the previous year, there was someone in the SEC and in the CFTC who said, or was it the Fed? I don't remember. Somebody declared that XRP was a currency outright within the United States. Uh, and that's why the SEC saying that it's a security makes no sense because we've had news before from the SEC of them not regulating it immediately in 2016 and 2017 when it came out as a security, the same exact thing when they were doing the other lawsuits to the other cryptocurrencies, and also someone declaring it a currency and also it being used around the world. Therefore, the SEC has no jurisdiction. That's kind of what they're going for. Um, It would be terrible if this news continues into like December because it's constantly very popular news. There are a lot of people who are like actively looking at this lawsuit to see exactly what's going on. There are people on on YouTube who make entire videos like as to what somebody said in court. And they're like, yeah, this person said this. And they like go through it with the law book. And I'm like, really? So, um, sure. Uh, they're trying to get this guy on, on, the, on, on, on the pedestal. Wow. Hope that didn't stop the sound. Uh, this guy on the pedestal to basically say, you know, whatever. The point is, um, SEC versus Ripple. Henman's deposition gets the green light. And Ripple can dispose, depose, SEC official who ruled Ethereum isn't a security. This was said by the judge. So, as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Fud Weiser, Mortified, Roman Geba, Bitcoin, Ben, Arachno, Dave, Tony Ambrosky, The Dealers, Den, Red Plump, Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, The Letter M, Stefan Dirks, Not Brain, <laughs> Not Brain, Captain Something in the Z-Way, Lay, Crypto, Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos Was Like, Mobarazzi, Jojo, Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quarter Bitty, Bear Bones, Mining, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Sneed a Miracle, Paternoster, Conan, don't skip leg day. Snacky Chan, Tolik Banan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stroyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Ebibiophobia, Todd, Mullis, Adam Graysick, Mohammed Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jaren Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bank Row Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Damien. Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test, Everyday, and Kyle Skip's Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, <laughs> Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigara Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all <laughs> very, very much for your support. 
Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, or who has subscribed. Thank you to all the NFT supporters. Thank you to everyone for still being here, listening to me rambling on about this wacky old cryptocurrency space. At the memento, Bitcoin is at 31,611 US dollars. It is down by 2.23%. This is what I meant, sideways down. We're not down, we're technically red, but it looks like it could go back up. It could also stay in the same exact range. Will we ever break out of this range? I do not know. Uh, experts think so. So everything is like lightly down. I think there were some coins that were up a little bit. Lumens is up by 3%. Leo said Unis Leo is up by one. OKB is up by one. And that's about it. So we'll see what the weekend brings us. I assume more ridiculous news because that's just the market that we're in. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having, have had, continue to have, might possibly have at some point during this day, a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.